and uh, just start from there. Um, I don't see that the record. I'm All right, ready. good deal. Everybody, Nesvin is going to be reading through some documentation now. I'm uh, on the road, but I'm still participating. And uh, Nesvin's going to be kind of leading the ship tonight. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Nesvin. Okay, thank you, Eloy. Yeah, today we continue our review to the reactor documentation. And I would like to read about state and life cycle. Uh, well, this page introduces the concept of state and life cycle in a React, in React component. You can find a detailed component API reference here. Consider the ticking clock example from one of the previous section in the rendering elements. We have only learned one way to update the UI. We call React DOM, React DOM dot render to change the rendered output. As you can see the code here, uh, we have a function called tick const element. And inside this element, we have a div. And inside that div, we have h1 and h2. And the React DOM dot renderer has element inside. In this section, we will learn how to make the clock component truly re reusable and encapsulated. It will set up its own timer and update itself every second. We can start by encapsulating how the clock looks. Uh, okay, now we have another code which is a functional component of clock. And it has a parameter props and return. Inside return, we have a div and h1 and h2. And another function called tick and render dom.render. So in this case, we are uh, rendering the clock component inside tick component. Um, however, it misses a crucial requirement, the fact that clock sets up a timer and updates the UI every second should be an implementation detail of the clock. Ideally, uh, ideally, we want to write this once and have the clock update itself. Okay. Mm. To implement this, we need to add state to the clock component. I think in from yesterday and the day before yesterday session, we try to see the difference between state and props. So. We use states is whenever there is some kind of activity or like kind of change. For example, if there is some user's input or buttons, if they keep on changing, then we use state. Otherwise, we use props. Props is just normally for static uh, components. And if there's no frequent change, we can use props. So since now the clock is changing every second, so we need to use states. State is similar to props, but it is private and fully controlled by component. Yeah. States is, is more about in the same component and we implement it and we use it there. But props is kind of sharing data from one component to another. Okay, converting a function 
to a class. You can convert a function component like clock to a class in five steps. One, create an AS6 class with the same name that extends react.com. So the for previously it was a functional component. Now we want to change that into a class component. So the step, the first one, we need to create AS6 class with the same name that extends react.component to or the second step, add a single empty method. It's called renderer. It's a method, class method. Third, move the body of the function into the renderer method. Move the body of the function into the renderer method. Okay. And fourth, place props with this dot props in the renderer body. Five, delete the remaining empty function declaration. Okay, now this is what it looks like. I'll read it. Now this is our new class component. So we have a key name called class and clock. It's the same name with the functional component clock and which extends from react.component. And we have a renderer method and also return. So all those methods they are here in the in the return for renderer method. And inside the div we have h1 and h2. And we used here this dot props dot dead dot to local time string. So uh, the main thing here is about those these dot props. This is something that is uh, uh, using from other component. Clock is now defined as a class rather than as a function. The render method will be called each time an update happens. But as long as we render clock into the same DOM, the same DOM node, only a single instance of the clock or class will be used. This let us use additional features such as local state and lifecycle method. Adding local state to a class. We will move the date from the props to state in three steps. One replace this dot props dot date is this dot state dot date in the renderer method. Okay. Now this become a local a local state. Then we use state here, okay? Second, add a class constructor that assigns the initial this dot state. Okay, inside the clock class component, now we have a constructor props, and also we have super props. Then we initialize this dot state, and which is dead a new date, we initialize the date. Also in the render section, in the return, and we have a div and h1 and h2, and we have this dot state, dot date as well. Now how we pass props to the base constructor. Okay, we have a constructor and a parameter with props, and super also the parameter props this dot state is equal to date and new date class components should always call the base constructor with props so always they should call 
the base constructor with props, something like this. And third, remove the date prop from the clock. Now we render only just the clock class component. Okay. We will later add the timer code back to the component itself. And the result looks like this. So I'll read the result. Okay, now we have same clock component, which is a class component and constructor is defined with the props parameter super again with the props and this dot state also defined in the renderer section this dot state the dot date also defined but in the react dom dot renderer we render only the clock open and close tag the clock component next we will make the clock set up its own timer and update itself every second adding lifecycle method to a class <coughs> In applications with many components, it's very important to free up resources taken by components when they are destroyed. We want to set up a timer whenever the clock is rendered to the DOM for the first time. This is called mounting in React. We also want to clear the timer whenever the DOM produced by the clock is removed. This is called unmounting. Okay, I'm gonna read again this part, the mounting and unmounting. In applications with many components, it's very important to free up resource taken by components when they are destroyed. We want to set up a timer when the clock is rendered to the DOM for the first time, this is called mounting. Okay, now we are mounting the clock into the DOM. We also want to clear that timer whenever the DOM produced by the clock is removed. This is called unmounting. Unmounting. Okay, we can declare special methods on the component class to run some code when a component mounts and unmounts. Okay, so we have a class component clock in the same way to find everything, a constructor, super, and state. But now we have two methods here component did mount and component will unmount. We have these two methods introduced and the renderer as usual. These methods are called lifecycle methods. So these two methods are called the lifecycle methods. The component did mount method runs after the component output has been rendered to the DOM. This is a good place to set up a timer. Okay. The component did mount method runs after the component output has been rendered to the DOM. And this is a good place to set up a timer. Um, <clears throat> okay, inside the component did mount method, we have this dot timer ID and set interval, and we have our function this dot tick 
1000. Okay, now we are setting the interval, which is in every one, one second. So this thing will happen. This, uh, the function will be executed in every one second. Now how we save the timer ID right on this. This the keyword. While this dot props is set up by React itself, and this dot state has a special meaning. You are free to add additional fields to the class manually if you need to store something that does not participate in the data flow, like a timer ID. We will tear down the timer in the component will amount lifecycle. Component will, um, will unmount method. Okay, we'll have a clear interval. This time, this dot time ID. Okay, so clear interval is uh, it's just normal JavaScript from mm, inbuilt method. <coughs> so it will going to remove the timer. Yeah. Finally, we will implement a method called tick that the clock component will run every second. If we use this dot set state, the schedule updates to the component local state. Okay. So this is going to be our final full code. Okay. We have hey, a code. Yeah. Hey, sorry, I just, uh, I took a phone call. Okay. But uh, I lost you at uh, unmounting. Uh, I, uh, I picked up the call when you were going through unmounting. Okay, I can, I can go back again. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, as I said, in the, in the component lifecycle, we have these two methods, the component did mount and the component uh, will unmount methods. So the did mount method is just setting the time interval. So which is like in every one second, the function will execute. But in the component will unmount, it just simply clear the timer. And it yeah. uses so, so basically the constructor initializes the object, then mounting begins the, the function of the timer, and then unmount clears the, the, the timer. timer. Yeah. But yeah. It still exists there as a component to be remounted. Yes, because be it's mounted just, yeah, they are clearing the resource. Like uh, I think uh, we use it and it remove it and it use remove. So it's just continuous process as long as we are using the app. Yeah. Yeah, but this is like the life cycle. Always there is the uh, the mount and unmount. Okay, finally, we will implement a method called tick that the clock component will run every second. Yeah, so now the clock will use the tick component. So the clock class component, the clock class component has the state and super props and constructor. Now the next method is component did mount. It's already the set interval is defined here with the tick method every one second and unmount. Okay. Sorry, my son is wake up. I should go and look at him. Eloid, are you listening?
เดี๋ยวเลยโอเคครับ maybe we need to continue from here I should stop for a while